We all know that it's great Australian heavy music out there, and that's what we're doing here right now is supporting it, and we want to thank this band, Ice Cocoon, which we have featured many times on the program when they sent us their uh, record uh, a while ago, and uh, we want to thank them for taking part in our uh, crowdfunding campaign, which uh, ends in about three weeks' time. We are also unleashing some new rewards tomorrow night at 7 p.m. But uh, the band Hail from Adelaide, they released their debut record, Deepest Crystal Black, and we do have uh, main man Owen Gillette from the band called Ice Cocoon here with us right now on uh, Heavy at Home. G'day, Owen. Welcome to the program. Uh, g'day. Great to be here. No worries. And again, we, uh, of course, have featured the band's music uh, several times on the program because it's just great, epic, progressive music. And uh, I know it's something that you've worked super hard on as sort of the main songwriter uh, of the group. Uh, tell us a little bit about the the band's sort of inception, just for some of the masses who don't know too much about uh, Ice Cocoon, and then we'll dabble right into uh, the up-and-coming epic first live show that's uh, soon to be uh, unleashed. Yeah, that's that's right. So um, effectively, Ice Cocoon is really actually a solo project. When it started as a solo project, with me, um, it's kind of the classic story that you hear of all the people that are looking for a sort of, you know, demo- democratic sort of band scenario, but it doesn't work out, so they do it themselves. Um, it's that sort of a scenario. I ended up writing the music myself because there was no one else that was coming to the party, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> and then... Uh, sort of um, accumulating more and more music and then eventually I've just got great musicians to play on the recordings with me and we've um, finally put together an album and uh, Divas Crystal Black is the first one of a number of albums which are on the way. So, And how do you find, you know, working and, and doing it yourself? I mean, people say there's that, that uh, possible problem that you can be too close to it and when someone sort of says hey you know maybe you could consider trying this it'd be like no i like this this the way this is i mean do you find it's just uh you know it is a control freak kind of approach um i i worked for quite a few years uh well i trained as an audio engineer and ended up working doing that for a fair few years so i've got i'm coming from that background as well but um I think it's one of those things, the longer you do it and the more you, um, more experience you get and the more eventually you just know exactly what you want and it becomes easier and easier. So, um, and it's eventually it actually becomes harder to imagine working with someone else on a creative level, the more you really refine what it is that you want and the way you think things should sound, whether it's a songwriting or the production or whatever. So, yeah, I think it's just accumulating a lot of experience and uh, being dedicated to what you're doing. So you're um, developing the perception and like listening to just enormous amounts of music over time. So you um, just know where you're at with things and and then keeping yourself in check. And I think the engineering side is part of that, how you just have to keep things in perspective you, there's a certain detachment from the music you, there's the artistic side and then there's the the production and the sounds and then the uh, but yeah <laughs> well, I've, I mean, it sounds like you're wearing a ton of hats because there's a performer side as well. The band will uh, be taking the stages very, very shortly, which we'll talk about that uh, right after we hear a song from uh, the latest record uh, that you uh, sent to us, of course, Deepest Crystal Black. We are chatting with Owen Gillette, main man behind Adelaide group Ice Cocoon. This one's called It's All on the Line, and we'll come back and talk a bit about that uh, the very first show coming up and also something that I've been trying to drill into a few people's ears over the last uh, year or two regarding the loudness wars and uh, I was very pleased to see that you enlisted uh, one of the uh, top masters who totally agrees with what's happening with the destruction of music and the mastering level Mr. Bob Katz who mastered uh, the, uh, the the latest record so that certainly pricked my ears up when I noticed that on the credits for the uh, Ice Cocoon record so we'll come back and have a bit of a audio nerd discussion as well uh, right after we hear from uh, this track called It's All on the Line we're chatting with Owen Gillette from Ice Cocoon this is the extended version of Heavy at Home right here on andrewhogue.com Yep, told you it was epic. A bit of, with a small hint of Devon Townsend in there, would you agree, Mr. Owen Gillette, from Ice Cocoon? Well, you're flattering me now. 
<laughs> well, some parts anyway, but again, that can't be a bad influence. That track was called It's All On The Line from the latest record, Deepest Crystal Black. Now, let's talk quickly about the uh, up-and-coming first ever show for Ice Cocoon. Fill us in on the date where people can catch the band. Of course, I believe it's going to be in your hometown in Adelaide. And tell us a bit about the members, yep. too, that are playing with you. Okay, so, yep, it's going to be on November the 29th, which is a Saturday night at the Promethean Theatre, which is on Grote Street in Adelaide, putting on a pretty pretty uh, sort of big production show with visuals and lighting and excellent sound and that sort of thing. So hopefully it will be a enjoyable experience and a really cool, I hope. So uh, in terms of the people, you mean other bands or the guys in my band? Or? Yeah, just uh, <laughs> how you enlisted the, uh, the the members to uh, you know p- to play with you in the in the, in the in the group for the show. Right. Okay. So uh, Matthew R. Davis, the bass player, he played the bass on Divas Crystal Black, and we've been friends for a long time. And other than that, Brody Green on drums, he's a like a session drummer, or sort of enlisted him as a session drummer, but he's done a heap of really awesome shows uh, a couple of which were with Mike Mills doing uh, an Iron Maiden tribute show and Metallica tribute show He, um, but uh, he's awesome and that's Mike, um, that's Mike and Mills from uh, Toe Hider, yes? That, that's right, he came over and did a bunch of shows doing uh, the Rock in Rio set list um, so, uh, and I knew Brody as well anyway because I'd recorded him and that sort of thing in another project so, and the other guys, um, basic, basically the sort of friends or people that I've known through, you know, um, other bands or just the extended network, but Darren, the lead guitarist, he used to play in a thrash metal band called Fury. Um, yep, well aware of that band from way back. Yeah, that's right. So he's, he's playing and another friend, Larry, has got a couple of projects going on. So um, we've, I guess it's all, it's a combination sort of friends session players and uh, people that have, have sort of roped in, I suppose. But we've been rehearsing for quite a few months to basically play the songs on the album as accurately as possible. And uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to nail that. So well, all the it best be to it. an excellent night. Well, let's talk a bit about the uh, the nerdy aspect of uh, the production and uh, the mastering. This is something I've raised many times here on uh, the program or even you know the station as well. Just regarding you know the over compression of a lot of bands' music today, and uh, I know a lot of bands probably don't really know too much about that. They they're all focusing on the mix and they get the mix right, and then when the mastering comes, it just comes and pisses all over it. Look at what happened to Metallica Death Magnetic. That's a prime example right there. Uh, and uh, I've noticed that you use Bob Katz. Uh, to master the uh, the the record Deepest Crystal Black, which he's sort of been spearheading uh, in the media about uh, trying to reduce the amount of compression on a lot of the music today to sort of save the right sound that it should be, uh, you know, before it gets completely brick walled, which is also the term. So, I guess as briefly as we can break it down for uh, those out there who don't know too much about the sort of loudness wars, I've encouraged people to Google it as well. But uh, tell us, you know, how you came into using Bob and uh, your sort of understanding of what is sort of happening to music today, that it's sort of being a little bit destroyed with the overmastering of uh, of uh, music. Well, there's a couple of things. Um, to start off with, uh, there's an unfortunate psychoacoustical or physiological phenomenon that when we hear two things and we hear one of them louder it, we instantly go oh that one's better it's clearer i can hear it better it's it's better so the problem is if the way that you make it loud is reducing the dynamic range so the size of the hits have to get smaller so the overall level can come up you can do that a little bit but once you've once you do it more and more and more and then your recording isn't quite as loud as someone else that's done it as much. So you do it a bit more and then eventually there's just nowhere to go. And music's actually getting smaller. If you play, yeah, and it's once once the penny drops and what's really happening, it's, it's a bit like waking up for the Matrix. You go, well, why is anybody doing that? Why do you want to <laughs> yeah. make your music smaller? Why do you want to, why do you want to do that? But, um, um, so... With Bob Katz, his background comes from recording live music and and obviously mastering it as well. But it particularly interested me because he really I knew that he really understood how live music is meant to sound. And 
I obviously, and he's been an outspoken proponent of not loud, no, engaging in the loudness war. So those two components made him the ideal choice for mastering the album because it was largely recorded as live as possible. There's basically no edits in the guitars. There's almost no editing on the drums. I wanted it to be performance-based like that, which is also somewhat of a reaction to the way people are recording heavy music and metal and all that sort of thing these days. So um, there's kind of a wrapped-up answer. (laughs) Yeah, well, I I agree with you definitely because, you know, I mean, there's so many great things you can do in the studio today. Everyone's guilty of it, but it's just how far do you go before your product becomes sort of unrealistic when you listen to it? Uh, and some bands don't care too much about that. They just think, well, we'll probably never get out and tour anyway, but it makes great for a studio project and things like that. So you might as well just go to town and make it as epic and massive as possible. But I've found that, yeah, I've heard some great bands on on uh, on CD when they've submitted music, and then you have this sort of expectation, and when you see them live, and we're not just talking about the sound, because, okay, not every band can pull off what they sound like on CD live, but you try and capture an energy, and when you hear a band's music, you're like, oh, I've got to see this live because you you kind of feel uh, some energy there and then you see it live and you're like, and that's it. You, you can be a little bit let down. So I think to a point there's got to be, yes, you can utilize the, the wonders of technology, but not to the point where it completely makes you inhuman. And that's that's what I'm seeing a lot more of or hearing a lot more of, uh, of uh, today. But hopefully, you know, we can uh, lead the charge and, and, and continue to uh, educate people a bit more on, you know, just not uh, completely overkilling uh, your music when it comes to uh, the mastering. Any uh, specific websites that you could suggest people to uh, check out, uh, Owen, that uh, they can do a bit more sort of research to understand the garble that we're talking about right now? Um, well, Bob Katz's website, which is com. He's got loads and loads of articles and there's links to YouTube videos of him giving extended seminars um, and, you know, uh, lecturing about what's going on with the loudness war, um, both from the historical point of view and technical, from a technical point of view. So I'd say his site is a great place to start. There's also some just some good videos on YouTube, actually, showing how basically with the level the initial amount of compression or peak limiting, it sounds appealing. But when you turn that down, like it sounds appealing because you're hearing it as louder and thinking it's opening it up or something. But then when you play that back at the same level as the uncompressed track, you find out that it's taken away all the energy. It's sawn off or pushed down all the peaks. So you've, you've got nothing left. I think once you sort of get that in your mind and you understand what it's really doing to the music, it, you kind of go, well, I, I don't want it to be small and, this week, you know, because this kind of music especially is meant to sound tough, it's meant to sound like energetic and it's meant to sound like people are hitting hard and that there's that uh, aspect of the performance still there so, I mean, it's it's it seems it seems absolutely crazy once you realise what it's actually doing. Yeah, well, hopefully more people out there can research it. But uh, again, keep us posted on that uh, up and coming show, uh, and uh, all the best with uh, Ice Cocoon Owen. And thanks so much for your support for the station. But certainly stay in touch and keep sending us uh, brand new uh, up and coming music from the group. Definitely will, and uh, to, I'm very happy to be supporting the cause. I think uh, it's really a great thing to have uh, the station going and supporting bands whether they're Metallica or you know bands like Ice Cocoon who are just kind of relatively speaking starting out career-wise so we I think I can speak for probably all bands in my scenario that we hugely appreciate the support and the uh, someone taking the time to listen and help to get it out there man so that's awesome. Thank back at you we all certainly believe that every band uh, has its place and has left its mark and that's what we try and do is you know fit in as much uh, as we can of 40 plus years of uh, all styles of heavy music otherwise it's just going to be a grandiose project of uh, one's tastes and that's exactly what the station is not about so uh again thanks so much for your time owen we're going to choose we'll get you to choose a song actually the off the uh the, the latest record deepest crystal black which i've noticed you've got a seven inch vinyl uh, available as well for the uh vinyl nuts too can people still get a hold of that Absolutely. If you go to icecocoon.com.au, that's the main site. We've got a web store there where you can buy the CD and also the 7 inch, which has a. There's another song that we didn't uh, end up putting on the album, um, but it's it's part of the album. It's just not really part of the narrative of the 
the actual CD as it's supposed to, as it runs. So, um, but it's it is part of the story, and uh, it's on the B side of the seven inch. So check it out, and it sounds great. All right, what song we're going to hear? <laughs> so we're going to go with the last track off the album called "About Loving Someone," which is probably the biggest, longest epic song. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but I think uh, it was a good time recording it in the studio. We just sort of you can really tell, particularly with the second half of the song, that it it's just performance. It's us just rocking it out, and it's you know it's it's actually slightly rough around the edges here and there, but I think it's. Um, it's exactly what it's supposed to be, and it's a, a moment in time. So, about loving someone, hope you enjoy. No worries. Thanks for your time, <laughs> Owen. All the best. Great, thanks.